Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the living Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are in the season of winter, the question that I wanted to examine with you is the question of, are you feeling disconnected? Now, some of you may be thinking, of course, we're in isolation. But as the winter is here, and as we are indoors even more, we can feel isolated and disconnected so much more now. And as you see in the slide here, the impact of isolation, the impact of disconnectedness on our health are many. These are some of the few things that are listed. Are you feeling any of these things at this time? You may be in a small or in a bigger way. So the question is, how can we be more connected and less isolated? Well, one way that we can look at this uh, question is by looking at scripture. And we're going to look at one of the readings, one of the uh, things that we find Christ doing. And this is in Luke chapter 17. So please turn. If you have your Bible, you can open it up and turn to it. Or you'll see it on the slide. We'll look at Luke chapter 17, verse 11 and onwards. Christ does one of his healings here. And this is a healing of not one person, but actually ten. So let's read about what happens here. And as you read, think about how this connects to 2020 in our current time. So verse 11, it says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now look at this icon that you see here. This icon shows you the lepers, the ten of them. And they're actually exiting this area, this structure that they've been secluded in. And these were the people who were secluded because they had leprosy, which was contagious. So they were forced to stay away from others to uh, not infect them. Now, we can relate this to 2020, right? Because we're in isolation and we're scared of infecting others or being infected ourselves, right? And you see the men, how they have the leprosy on them. So they come out with a prayer as their hands are stretched out. Jesus, they say, right? They say, Master, Christ, Jesus, have mercy on us. This is a prayer that they give. And then after that, let's look at the verses after. In verse 14, it says, So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. This is interesting to hear, this miracle that Christ does. He doesn't instantly heal them. He asks them to go to the priest. Why is that? Well, two reasons. One is, the priests were the ones that would certify that they were clean so they could go back to society and not be isolated. But the other reason, the second reason is, they, when they were going on their journey, in their journey, were they cleansed, right? That's what it says, right? As they went, they were cleansed, not before the journey. So they had to have faith that they would be healed. One of them could have said, oh, what are you talking about? I'm not going. Um, but they all decide to go in a walk of faith. But it's the second part of the incident that I want to look at. Let's look at from verse 15. After they were healed, it says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God. Loud voice. We hear it again, right? And he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Samaritan, a non-Jew. Out of the nine, the one was a non-Jew. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Christ knew the answer to those questions. But he was asking those questions for those who were there listening to him. And he is asking those questions for you and for me, the reader. 
So the question he asks here is, why is there only one that came back to give thanks? And that one was a foreigner. Now, if you look at this icon here, you see these two incidents. And this is the second part of that icon that I shared earlier. The left side is the first part that we read. The right side is the second part. In the left side, the ten men, they were coming to God in prayer. But on the right side, there was only one person who came back for praise. So the question is, are we men of prayer? We can easily give our prayers to God. We can ask, ask, ask. But are we, in addition to being men and women of prayer, are we also men and women of praise as well? St. Athanasius says it this way. This is his commentary on this reading we had. He says, You recall, he's telling the readers, You recall that he loved the one who was thankful. Christ, that one who returned, right? He loved the one that was thankful. But he was angry with the ungrateful ones because they did not acknowledge their deliverer. That's what he calls God here, deliverer. They thought more highly of their cure from leprosy than of him who had healed them. Beautiful thing, the words that he says here, right? They thought more of the healing than the healer. And I wanted to look at this question here because as we are in a time of isolation and disconnectedness, being thankful, the season of Thanksgiving and as Christmas comes, being thankful is an important quality we must remember, even in this time of isolation. Now, to give you a concrete way of doing this, I wanted to share with you this video. When you look at this video, it's from YouTube, and it's called The Success Village. You can look it up. We won't watch the video. I'd recommend you look it up, Success Village, and look for the one that says The Success Project. You'll see the beginning part of this video so you know what it looks like. Once you see the video, I want to just give you a quick uh, summary of what this, uh, what, what this happens in this uh, success project. This woman that you see here, she is the coach, and she goes around the street asking people this question. She just asks random people this question. This is the question she asks. Have you thought about success and who's helped you become successful? Who are the people who have made you successful is a question. And the, men you, the, the, the guy that you see here and other people that she asked, most of them said, no, no, I haven't really thought about that. And of course, success here doesn't just mean monetary wealth. Success can be many things for many people, right? Who were the people that made you successful? Most of them said, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Well, she has them come and them write on this board that they have set up in the street. They go and write down all the people that have made them to be who they are. So in this chalkboard, they write those names down of people that they remember. Then after writing these names down, she asks them to pick one of them. And they pick one of them. And the next thing is the screen or the curtain behind them opens up. They write something, but then after that, behind the curtain is this telephone booth that you see here. And she says, I want you to call one of those persons that you listed. And the individuals all call them and talk to them and express their thanks. After doing this, she asked the participants, how did that feel? And one of the ladies, this is what she said. This is what I have quoted. She says, it puts things back into perspective for me. After she made the call and thinking about who made her successful, right? It made her, it says, to let me know that it wasn't just me, the reason why that I've achieved so much. It was a village, right? More than one person, right? That made her who she is. So the point that I wanted to make here is for you to think about who are those you can acknowledge have made you who you are today. I'd recommend that you first write a list of three people that you remember uh, have made you who you are today. Just write a list of three people. It can take a little bit of time. Just on a, write a, on a piece of paper, just write three names of people you remember. 
Then in that list, I wanted you to think about which one of those would you want to reach out to. And when we write these names, I must also acknowledge one thing. We all have to. One person that we must acknowledge, and you see this in the icon here, it's the Syriac icon. It's one of my favorite icons. It shows God, Christ, the baby child, right, as Christmas is coming here. How intimate their relation, his relationship was with, was with his mother, Mary, and Mary with the child, right? You see how lovingly they embrace each other, right? We must not forget God, our Creator. He is the first person we must thank. So saying a prayer of thanks to God Almighty is a starting point here. We must have that intimate relationship with our Creator, right? Our deliverer, deliverer as we heard from Athanasius. But the second part of this I wanted you to think about is who are other people that you would list. So once you have the list of the three, pick one of them and call one of those individuals. You are isolated, but we still have a telephone that we can use, right? And some of these people, one of the, per the person you might cho choose might be per someone you've been in touch with already. Or it might be someone you haven't been. I called my boss, and this was my first boss that I had when I started working. So this was 15, 20 years, and I haven't talked to him for so many years. So when I called him, I just caught up on times, and I told him at the end, I just wanted to also call to tell you that you've had actually had an impact on my life. The things, these things that you told me, or these things that we did, I still remember them, and it's helped me and shaped me to who I am today. And it's as simple as that. It can be difficult, but make that call to someone. And if someone on that list is departed, no longer here, remember them in prayer. Pray for our departed, as our tradition tells us, right? And if they have a son or a wife or a husband or a daughter, maybe you can reach out to them and tell them that too. But acknowledge, call on one of these individuals so that we are not just men of prayer where we ask things, we are also men and women of praise where we give thanks to those around us, right? So here, I want to end off with this quote from St. Cyril. This is what he says about this reading that we had of the ten lepers being healed. He says this, Falling into a thankless forgetfulness, the nine lepers that were Jews did not return to give glory to God. It shows that the Samaritans were grateful but that the Jews, even when they benefited, were ungrateful. You see those two words that Cyril, St. Cyril says? Thankless forgetfulness. We can have thankless forgetfulness. We can. And when this isolation time is upon us, use that as an advantage to call people. You have some more time. Call that individual, that person, and not have this thankless forgetfulness in our life. Let us be men of praise, men and women of praise, and not just men and women of prayer. As we think about this and as we reflect upon this, please make that call today. And as you make those prayers and make those calls to God Almighty and to those individuals, those health issues that we talk about, they can be, those moments can be moments for healing so that we are less isolated and less disconnected from people. May the season of Christmas as it comes upon us and may the time of Thanksgiving be a time for us to give thanks to others. To God, to God alone, is due all glory, honor, and worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.